Mom and I were always on the run, trying to stay ahead of the Nazis. And as they say, it's difficult to uh, hit a moving tra target. So we would travel in, on the train from one place to another. And uh, at the same time, trying to make a living here because we had no money. And then moving again, maybe buying something over there that they had and bring to another place uh, that was needed. Until one day, uh, on the train, uh, the German came on the train and they uh, uh, asked for documents, everybody, and they got suspicious what we have in our uh, basket there. So here we have kielbasa and egg. And they started to ask us, where did you get it? How much did you pay for it? And we started to deny. But they got suspicious about mom that uh, she looked Jewish. So they took us off the train and uh, arrested us. So they brought us to the Gestapo station, a few kilometers away, which was Stalova Vola. This was the building. That's right. Mom was on this side of the basement, and I was over here. Yes. Oleg has found the Gestapo building to which he and Zhuta were taken in 1942. A plaque in Polish indicates that this building has been preserved for memory to commemorate the Polish patriots tortured and murdered by the Nazis. This is the, the Villa of Terror here. It just says, look at that dog, Dad. The dog reminds my father of the dogs the Nazis trained and used to attack their victims. They torture the patriots here, and they kill them. They send them to, uh, actually, they didn't send them. They were just executed here and, and dumped someplace, one by one. This was not at mass, you know, that they, took so many people at one time. One by one, they broke their spirit, they broke the, until they uh, admit uh, who they were or what they did, and then they shot them, and uh, who knows where they dumped them. But this was uh, one by one. This was, the, this was the political death camp. And with the dogs here. Boy, the dog saved my life and, and mom's too, because <laughs> he t the dog threw himself against the Gestapo when he was hitting me with the whip, uh, with lead at the end. And when <laughs> they came with the, uh, with the uh, vicious dog to mom, the dog started to lick her hands. It was a miracle. He brought out a big dog, a German shepherd, and started after him to yank him. He said, you should bite me, you should do. And that dog just looked at me, and I just said, I talked Polish to the dog, come here, dog, come here, dog. I'm sure you are better than he is. He's a worse dog. I talked to that German like you talk to a dog because when you don't care, that's how you are. So obviously, it was not meant. The dog knew to save our life. After a certain point, Martin, I was not that scared because I didn't know if anybody of my family survived, if there is a place to go. I knew I'm pregnant and I didn't have a pot to pee. So whatever the soon, I was just praying the sooner the better and just painless. I wanted to die. The, haven't you heard that some people at certain situation want to go? <sighs> they couldn't get any confession and they got frustrated and they said the hell with him, take him to the woods and, and shoot him. And it was these woods, right? So these, these were the woods here. And that uh, Gestapo, I never forget his face, pulled his revolver and, asked, uh, and ordered us to walk. And as we were walking, 
My blood was hitting my ears and pounding. I wasn't scared. I knew that I will die, but I asked myself, why so soon? Uh, I have never done anything wrong. I have never harmed anyone. And uh, my wife at the same time started to talk uh, loud that the Gestapo could hear. As we go into the woods, and it's in August, the sun is shining and it smells and so many field flowers. And I say to myself, my God, my child will never see something like this. God, how could you let an unborn child die without seeing the marvels of your, of your world? And we had that pounding in our ear. We didn't even hear any steps behind us. And at one point, somehow, it got quiet, like, like we were completely exhausted, and there was quietness. We, uh, we stopped and turned back, and there was no one behind us. So we continued walking, being afraid that maybe uh, some trap was set for us. We walked till the end of the day, there was a village that we found. We asked the peasant, could we stay for the night? And they let us stay. And in early in the morning, we left to continue our journey from one place to another, to from one train to another train. <laughs> 